Joining me today on NYSE Floor Talk is Andy Lowry. He is the CEO at Epirus. Andy, it is wonderful to have you in Floor Talk. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me. I really appreciate it. So Andy, congratulations are in order. You were just named CEO of the company earlier this week. Um, talk to me about Epirus and your journey to CEO in a career that has been in the aerospace and defense industry for many years. <laughs> yeah, actually I've had sort of three careers over 30 years or so. The first part of my career was 10 years in the military, in the Navy, where I was a Navy nuclear engineer, first as an enlisted man and then an officer. The next 10 years I uh, spent in high tech, advanced electronics and aerospace and defense, where I worked at companies like Maycom and Raytheon. And then my most recent chapter, the last 10 years, I've been mostly with big data and AI companies and like augmented reality and other kind of uh, com where computers have to have perception, basically. So what Epris is, is sort of a culmination, if you will, of those three careers where our customers are primarily DOD today, not to say in the future we may not expand to civil and international, but today we're primarily DOD. We're utilizing or leveraging advanced electronics, and we're doing that with sort of a juxtapositioning, if you will, of AI and advanced electronics. So we take in AI, sort of most advanced electronics that are out there today, along with a DOD focus or a non-traditional defense contract top, type of business model. Mm -hmm. So I think you know that background kind of more than prepares me for being a great CEO and I couldn't be more excited. I like to say sometimes that I feel like it's a childhood dream come true that I'm CEO of the Bat Cave, more or less, <laughs> like in Batman, you know, and maybe you could put that underneath me to say CEO Bat Cave. Right? <laughs> I like that, Andy, I like that. So. so Andy, tell me, what's the state of play when it comes to drone warfare and drone defense capabilities? And tell me, is the DOD doing enough to prepare for drone threats? I think, you know, I, I don't want to hedge on this. The answer is just no period, N-O. And uh, the reason is, is it's a very difficult and what the military used to call an asymmetrical threat, where you have consumer electronics built in bulk, built in mass, that are being able to be able to be controlled and utilized for, you know, we see it every day in the news. I mean, we see it just a couple days ago in the Red Sea. Drone attacks are becoming the primary offensive weapon against the rest of the world. And the reason is, is they're very inexpensive. They're very cheap, they're very easy to use, easy to deploy. Almost like if you think like computer viruses are very easy to make, very hard to defend against. And so that makes defense against this threat just a paramount priority. And today we're doing a lot of 1v1, you know, 1v1, one drone, one effector, or one missile, or one bullet. Whereas that's not the war of the future. The war of the future are centiswarms and killiswarms, thousand drones coming at someone, not just 10, not just five, a thousand drones. There's a good movie from a years ago called Angel Has Fallen where they have Morgan Freeman and they show that. They show an idea of what it would look like if you had a thousand drones in an attack. The only real way to defend against anything like that is with shields, not with bullets. And that's what this system does. The Leonidas, which is our flagship product, is a phased array electronic warfare system that puts shields of electromagnetic energy in across a large section of the sky so that hundreds of drones can run into that shield and all fall. Millions, I mean, literally millions. It's sort of like uh, in the Leonidas 300 movie where you had Leonidas and just the 300 against a million uh, man army coming in a million drone army could be stopped by this Leonidas because of the way we employ the electromagnetic energy. A lot of movie references here. <laughs> well, I mean, we're in uh, sort of New York, you know, a lot of movie stuff goes on here, I guess. <laughs> so now you have a model of the Leonidas here, which is a high power microwave system for counter electronics effects. So talk to me more about it and tell me what sets it apart from other directed energy systems. Yeah, as I was kind of going into, most directed energy systems, either a laser-based system or even other high-powered microwave systems, use single shots to engage one drone at a time. This particular system has electronics in it that allow this beam that comes and forms out of this face here 
to turn into basically a very fast electronically steam steered beam, like faster than you know a person could even perceive. So in a second, we can sweep the beam across the sky and create shields of energy so that you may have 10 drones, 100 drones, or 1,000 drones. As they come in contact with a shield, they all are affected by the same electromagnetic energy. So this allows us to be particularly well suited for drone swarm defense. And there's a lot of, I would say, very admirable, very good companies that are going one-on-one -on -one UAS. This system is truly the only system that I'm aware of that can uh, combat the swarm threat that we're really facing these days. All right, and Andy, finally, tell me, what does the future hold in the next year for the company in the next five years? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> this year, like I said, is our flagship product. We call it the Leonidas product line, which is designed to detect, search, and then obviously affect drones. But beyond that, we have, as I said, civil and then international application of this particular system. But below the surface, where we don't talk a lot, we're doing a lot of other advanced electronics meets AI type of work. And in that category, we're looking at what's called uh, digital pre-distortion and envelope tracking. We're looking at things like uh, uh, taking plasma, microwave plasmas, and uh, actually converting 90% plus of the electromagnetic energy to chemical energy through these plasmas and how we kind of uh, orientate in that way. Everything we do is, like I say, this juxtaposition between AI and advanced electronics. So there's many big problems, green energy problems, defense problems that EPRIS has in their portfolio to solve in uh, the future. So, Well, it sounds like an exciting future for EPRIS. Yeah, we're and, excited. Well, and congratulations to you on becoming CEO again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's not a task that I take lightly or with any sort of... Uh, overconfidence. You know, I'm very, very humble and uh, appreciative and I am truly, I guess, a servant leader I like to view myself as. So I'm here to serve the company and then serve the warfighter ultimately with kind of the defense of, uh, of, of a threat that we really don't have a lot of options with right now. I mean, uh, when you see what we're doing today in a lot of the drone scenarios, we're taking striker missiles, hundreds of thousands of dollars against a $5,000 drone with maybe a little hand grenade strapped underneath it. A system like this, once it's purchased, it's less than a penny per drone that we'll be taking out. I mean, it's just the cost of the electricity it takes to go ahead and power the system. So the cost equation gets fundamentally flipped uh, by the advance of these types of systems, so. All right, well, Andy, thanks for joining me on Floor Talk. Thanks, Great to Judy. have you. Thank you, great to be here, thanks again.